a fire training that sparks a revival in cultural burning practices not seen in decades. Plus, a new mixed martial arts gym opening up an exhibit that tells a story of the past unlike you've seen before. All that and more coming up on Tribal Nations News. Welcome to Travel Nation News. I'm your host, Levi Hill. And I'm Kara Love Flores. We open up our broadcast with a story about fire safety and the reason why locals were able to receive this training for traditional purposes. The La Jolla Reservation Fire Department opened their doors to anyone willing to learn safety to help bring back cultural burnings. Natives from all around registered to come to learn about fire safety, allowing for education and hands-on experience with seasoned veterans. I'm uh, Wesley Ruiz Jr. and the Fire Chief for the La Jolla Reservation Fire Department and today is January 6th, Friday, and we just completed a week-long training of the uh, basic wildland firefighter training. It's the training that all brand new wildland firefighters get before they get started in their careers. And um, the reason why we're doing it is that we've been working in regards to cultural stuff, cultural burning. So the emphasis is, of course, is to bring back cultural fire to the reservations and surrounding lands as well. So it's something that's been missing for years and decades uh, here on the reservation and, you know, in the state and, and outside as well, too. So. Uh, this is the start of it because we have to have people trained in fire behavior and whatnot to start moving up to be eventually burn bosses or assisting with the burn. So we've set this up over the last year. Uh, we just completed the first phase of that or the first class of that. We do have uh, more classes that are in sync with this and over the next two months. So, um, you know, again, we're just trying to bring back that cultural burning to the reservations, and uh, this is the start of it, and uh, we're working towards that and, you know, hope to gain and gather more folks for it, and I think we will. You know, we had some good instructors, uh, well-seasoned instructors for the class, so that makes a big difference as well to have those uh, seasoned uh, folks in fire to be able to instruct. So I have to thank the Forest Service especially for that and helping us out. With proper fire training now in place, we can expect to see return to those traditional burnings very soon. Switching gears, we see the opening of a new MMA gym. Breakcycle Warriors, boasting a Dragon Ball Z theme, is owned and operated by our own native champions, looking to pass values and traditions through self-defense and MMA. But Breakcycle Warriors isn't only about MMA, but instead teaching others to grow in all aspects of life. That's right. Their main focus is breaking the cycles of addiction, poor health, and negativity, replacing it with values and programs to help promote better life, be them, jujitsu lessons, mental strength training, and even nutrition. Let's take a look. Very, very special ribbon right here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to give us a countdown? Yeah. yeah. All right, ready? Three, two, one, ready? Go. Three, two, one. Man. Yeah. Like it's a really good spot for the community to be at. Like this is a really good place to be. You get to um, get like fit and learn how to not fight but like defend yourself and also just how to stay in shape in general. Uh, my name's Shane Cranick. I come from Vievas. Uh, right now we're on the senior land uh, near Palma and Almaraz in between there and Lincoln. Uh, we're here at Break Cycle Facility. Um, this is our grand opening, uh, Break Cycle Warriors. Break Cycle is a new organization, it's a nonprofit um, founded by Bradley Wachenio. Uh, I'm on the team, I work with Bradley. We do with Jiu Jitsu, we do uh, Muay Thai boxing, wrestling, we do outreach programs, we do uh, fundraising, we do seminars. Uh, I, I am the mental health, mental strength coach here on the team. So it's leadership training, um, and all of it is in an effort to like the name says, is to break cycles. The sports is the art of it. Mental, physical, uh, spiritual. We want to engage and have hard conversations and, and, and grow. We're intent to grow as a team. We're walking this out, trying to break cycles in our own life. But um, we want to help you do it too. The short of it is we, we're better together. We're stronger together and we can do this. Uh, I'm Bradley Wichenio. I'm from uh, Paula Reservation. And uh, we're here at Break Cycle Warriors. This is our uh, grand opening for our facility. It's been years in the making. You know, when I was younger, I fought uh, MMA, you know, mixed martial arts, and I got into that through um, 
you know, getting in trouble at school pretty much is what happened. You know, I was getting in fights, got kicked out and, you know, that led me to martial arts, you know, later on when I turned about 18 years old, you know, my brother took me to a martial arts school and that's how a lot of this came about. You know, I, I found a healthy outlet. I found, um, you know, I met people that I never would have met if I didn't leave the reservation. We started our, our youth kickboxing and our fitness class. We got in touch with a lot of kids down the reservation. We had about 40 students at the time and started to learn a lot about them and their traumas and things that they've been through and um, started realizing the need to have a healthy, positive outlet. This program is open to anybody, all ages, you know, anybody that's willing to come take a healthy risk and come check it out, man. You know, our whole team is Native American. We're from the res. So naturally we're gonna attract our people, but we're open to everybody, you know, and we're trying to even open our people's eyes to, you know, how many different people are out there. You know, that's what I got out of martial arts and we're trying to give that same thing to, to our people as well. And uh, my cousin Squire, he runs a uh, Riz Jitsu. So he's our partner in all of this. He's funded a lot of this, you know, this whole project wouldn't have been possible without him, you know, funding the program. So, and he's also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu professional MMA fighter. So he's my fellow coach and all this, yeah. So we're all just a bunch of different people with different stories just coming together for a common goal. And those are strong, inspiring words coming from Break Cycle Warriors. Shifting gears once more, we take a look at an upcoming event just around the corner. February 18th, be sure to check out the Run With The Sun Tournament of Champions Cornhole and Horseshoe Competition at Barona, and it's going to be at Santa Isabel on the 19th. Not to mention coming up on the 25th, Walking in Beauty, Indigenous Resilience, an evening of guest speakers, music, and even fashion show honoring murdered or missing Native women and relatives. Stay tuned now as we take a look at the newest exhibit opening its doors, created by the Imperial Valley Desert Museum that highlights Kumia history. The new interactive exhibit named Ma Uyao Sky Knowledge sheds light on Kumia cosmology and the tradition celebrated within it. The museum had a recent ribbon cutting for its latest exhibit designed by the staff showcasing the rich Kumia history of the land and letting visitors gain first-hand experiences with 17 displays, all inspired by the book by Michael Connolly McQuish titled Mai Uyao, Kumeyaay Cosmology. Mai Uyao, Sky Knowledge, is an in-house exhibit uh, made by IVDM that immerses its viewer in the traditions and culture behind indigenous astronomy and cosmology. We had a great time making this exhibit. We loved working with Michael on it, and it's great to see it come to life. And now we hope that people come and visit. I'm happy to be here today, and I, I really uh, enjoyed going through this exhibit. I think they did a really excellent job of taking the information that was in my book and putting it onto displays. I think people can really see it in a, in a different format, maybe, than what they would see in, uh, in reading a book. And I think it also ties in with um, one of the themes that you have here in the desert where we have such clear skies and there's not a lot of city lights and, and it's really a great place to observe the sky. So you can look at some of the constellations that are on the wall and the, on the pictures on the wall and on the tapestries and, and you can go right outside and, and, uh, and take a look and say, oh yeah, there it is right, right there look at the moon and go out and look at, check the moon out and say, yeah, I see the rabbit in the moon. And, you know, I see Emu, I see uh, Shaluk, I see all these other constellations. And, and maybe, uh, maybe in some ways it can give people an opportunity to really get a little bit of a feel for the spirituality that the Kumeyaay people had when, before there was technology, when that was one of our most important tools that we'd use for passing information on from generation to generation or for guiding us in how we how we live our lives. It's a truly one-of-a-kind experience the whole family can enjoy. Kumeyaay cosmology and be a part of living history. Coming up, a story that touches many hearts and changed lives that is Ghana. To give more information, here's our Kenny Ramos. Thank you, Kiara. Since the formation of Ghana in 1992, it has tackled tough topics and changed the lives of many, creating a safe environment for all who wish to attend it sheds light on issues not often talked about within our local tribal communities and gives way for what is needed most, healing. And with the latest Gona happening last June on the Los Coyotes Reservation, we can now see the impact firsthand. Miyoya 
Um, my name is Cassie Witten. I'm from the Pachanga Indian Reservation, and I work with Miss Amy, Miss Esmeralda, and Miss Andrea at Atahum Pumquan for the People Organization. And what does Gona mean to you? What Gona means to me is helping our young people, providing resources and community to them that they don't have, and being able to know that they're worthy and wow. sacred, um, no matter what, um, no matter what they're going through. And how does this affect the community? Have you seen? Um, in the community, I've seen that it has um, helped the young people heal from their traumas, um, suicidal tendencies, and substance abuse. They've come to our communities to get resources from us, which we're very blessed for. And how has it affected you personally? Um, personally, it's affected me in such a good way. Um, I was disenrolled when I was seven, so being able to come back and provide resources for the community, provide spaces for them, uh, means the world to me. On January 22nd, 2023, Atahum Pomquan hosted an intimate gathering for indigenous youth ages 18 to 25. This event is a six-month follow-up from the Gathering of Native Americans, also known as GONA, that was held in the summer of 2022. Today, about 40 people, young adults, and facilitators met at the Ipe Nation of Santa Isabel. After eating lunch, playing games, and a talking circle, a sweat was provided for further spiritual and physical healing. Ghana is truly a one-of-a-kind, life-changing experience, and we want to thank everyone who played a role in helping this event happen, as well as all the future Ghanas. And that's all for this week. And for everyone here at Tribal Nations News, I'm Levi Hill. And I'm Carol Flores. Asukam Nawuma. Nishini Chang. <laughs>